My book review is on Savage Inequalities, which was written by Jonathan Kozal. Savage Inequalities was written in 1991 and discusses disparities in schools across the United States based upon student racial and socioeconomic backgrounds. Kozal is more than a researcher. He is also a teacher. He began teaching in 1961 at a largely minority school that needed many repairs. This school had a limited or unequal resources compared to other neighboring schools with different demographics. Years later, after he retired, Kozal began visiting schools across the United States and documenting the conditions of schools and the populations they serve. Kozal documented schools in various places. He started at a school in East St. Louis. East St. Louis the school in East St. Louis was built near a toxic waste site. The playground equipment was built of toxic metals. So as the students played, many of them became sick. They also became sick based upon the waste from the Monsanto plant that was nearby. Schools have been mismanaged in the East St. Louis district for many years. Many of these schools actually had sewage floods that affected the classrooms as well as the lunchrooms. There were many shortages on books, supplies, computers, even toilet paper were things that you were expected to run out of. The schools that he documented in East St. Louis had science classes that lacked tables, test tubes, running water, and even heat. So sometimes during the winter, the schools had to close because it was too cold inside of the buildings to actually have school. Many of the buildings in East St. Louis specifically had toxic mold that was growing inside of the schools and in the industrial arts classrooms or the shop classrooms, they did not have the supplies that were actually required for the students to even use in the classroom. In East St. Louis, many of the teachers were underpaid and it was visible that many of the students that were in the schools were minority students. Now, there were other schools that were predominantly white schools in neighboring communities, but they refused to allow these kids from East St. Louis to actually enroll in those schools. Kozal goes on to highlight schools in Chicago, New York, and other places that all share similar type incidences. In Lawndale, Chicago, property taxes determine the amount of money that schools are given. So therefore, rich schools that have a high or rich schools that are in rich areas have a higher value to pay their teachers and to equip the schools than in neighboring communities that might not have as much funding. This creates a disproportional imbalance within the schools or as Kozal says, savage inequalities. When, Co when Kozal visits New York, he finds nearly identical results. Within the district, many of the outlying suburban schools spend more than double the amount spent on inner city schools based upon the revenue that they have in those areas. Every school that he highlights in the book, including our nation's capital in Washington, D.C., had gross inequalities based upon funding, based upon political influence in the area, and based upon the governance that these schools were given for the funding for each of those students. The book doesn't mention this, but here in Texas we have, or here in Houston, Texas specifically, we have magnet schools. Many of the magnet schools receive extra funding that local neighborhood schools may not see. So. Even here in our city of Houston, even though each student gets a certain amount per state, per the state, even within our district, certain schools might receive additional funds because of programs and classifications of the programs at the schools. One thing that surprised me is when Kozal interviewed or went to a school in Appalachia. Many of the schools that he went to were inner city. They were predominantly minority. But one school that he talked about towards the end of the book 
was a school in Appalachia. This school was predominantly white. It was overcrowded. And because they were poor whites, the school also received less funding. Appalachia schools often resembled the inner city schools that Kozal visited. Kozal concludes by emphasizing the pattern that disadvantaged minorities and the greed of others who are unwilling to share. Incompetent, indifferent government that do nothing and block the success of the poor. Many students who grow up in poverty already have many hindrances to their success. Minorities who attend underfunded city schools graduate at disproportionately lower rates than those who attend and those who attend institutions of higher learning attain college degrees at lower rates than their non-minority counterparts. Savage Inequalities was written by Jonathan Kozal, and I'm going to end with a quote that he makes. Education, still separate, still unequal.